Hey there, you guys. How are you? So I was um, making some custom paint colors, just some special mixes from paint that I have. Um, this one's by White Knights. I had tons of it. If you follow my channel, you know I had tons of it. <laughs> um, in any case, I made these so far and I have some ideas for some other mixes that I really want to do. But when I was making cherry, this is Storm. I love Storm. It's so pretty. As you can see, they're just beautiful. They're granulating. They are semi-transparent. They flow so well. You're going to actually get to see some of these in this uh, painting session because I was just doing something for, I think, Instagram or our group page. And by the way, the group page to Facebook is linked below. So please come join us because I'm giving away paint um, every single month in our group. So these colors are just, um, I'm just making them for our giveaways. Now, am I going to sell them? I, I didn't really have intention to sell them, but if I have any left over, I will put them on my website so that you can order whatever I have left over, I promise. So just give me a little bit and um, by the time you're seeing this video, I probably will have something that you can order. I do have some cool palettes coming in too from Schminka. So if you really love Schminka and you're a palette fiend like I am, we should do a palette video. Then uh, always pay attention to my website. There's gonna be a, uh, a section coming up towards more towards Christmas and I'll load up the, the really cool tins that I found and all of the uh, limited edition stuff that I was able to get my hands on. Pretty fun. I know, I'm obsessed with it. So in any case, I was doing this and one of you guys asked me if I would do a tutorial on how I paint these roses. This is the peacock right here. This is the cherry. And this is what Stormy looks like in more diluted. And this is a really cool color because it's got cerulean in it and this beautiful gray. So Stormy is really neat, but I just wanted to use it on here too because I thought it'd be kind of fun to see, um, you know, in different scenarios how it paints. I can't wait to do like a sky with that. <laughs> All right, so um, let's put this over here maybe. Yeah. So that you guys can see the reference and let's get these paints out of the way so that I can start painting some roses for you. I love to make custom mixtures because they're just, you know, they're things that I just can't get anywhere else and paint's really, really lovely to play with. It's so therapeutic. So when I, um, when I do these kind of things, I do them because at the end of the night and the end of the day before I go to bed, I always like to paint or just do something. And I'll tell you when I'm really stressed, like making a custom paint color is very, very like mind consuming. So you really can't think of anything else other than that when you're doing it. Let me grab some brushes. Okay. So... I have certain brushes I like to use for these type of things. You don't want them to be too stiff. This is a great one. This is the one I was using before. It's just a quill. Um, this is a squirrel quill number four. This one is actually by Paul Rubens and I like it. It's good. There's also Ultimo. Escoda makes a really great quill um, in Ultimo. Neptune makes a great quill, except this one's like huge. So our paper is too small to use this one. The bigger ones are used for like larger paper. But you know, you could also do these roses with like the Escoda Versatile. This is a like a striper brush, you know, very long brush size four. So maybe we'll choose a couple of these here so that depending on what brush you have, um, we can paint some roses. Let's try this one this is a cat's tongue so this is a one half cat's tongue or oval wash uh, this one's by princeton neptune um, i could do a dagger this one's a really nice dagger it's a very very loose dagger three eighths um, by princeton neptune 
I think that's good. What else did you have? So somebody, I'm sure you have a quill. Quills are great, especially you want to look for something with a point. Uh, these are going to do something different, but when they get wet, you'll see what I mean. And can you do it with a square? You could do it with a wash brush, but I mean, why? It depends on how loose you want the roses, I guess, right? So let's just take these because these are odd and <laughs> they're just unusual brushes. And I can show you that you can pretty much get this with just about anything you have. What I wouldn't recommend to get like very loose, um, beautiful watery roses, I wouldn't recommend that you use um, the Nept or not the Neptune series, but the Elite series, the Aqua Elite series. Depends on your rose because if the brush is too stiff, it's going to give you a different effect. It's not going to do the same thing, you know. So these quills are like a lot more soft. This is a Da Vinci quill, and if it goes to a point that's even better because you're going to have a nicer ability to flick and I'm going to show you this right now. So to do good roses if your brush is too round and thick and you can't get a point you'll see all of these when I dip them in water they all create a point. So I, th I find that one of the best ways to make roses and do loose roses like this is just to have a point and have something that's kind of pliable you can see they're they're all really really nice they're very like squirrel or squirrel synthetic kind of brushes right nothing has too much of a snap this cat tongue has a little bit more you're going to see the difference when I try to use it and then this is going to be a lot looser rose of course but this is also great to make the petals and the um, the stems this will do everything. I literally don't even have to change. I did this entire page just with this one brush. And this is really fun to use. I love to use these. A lot of you guys are like, no way I cannot use this brush, but yeah, it's fun. Okay. So let's use cherry. I have not even made pans of cherry yet. I am getting there. I actually just made this one sample of cherry and I called it a night because I was like trying to decide if I wanted cherry to be more rosy or more red like orange red because I was eating a cherry just when I was making it and literally it was more rosy it was not like a red cherry red you know these are the these are the samples that I've been playing with so far so right now this is where cherry is so it's like it's when you dilute it with water, it looks really red, but this, you get this, but then you also get this. And that's the beauty of that color. I love it, you know? And then Peacock, same thing. Um, there's like different strengths. This one has a little bit more blue. This one I made a little bit more green. And I kind of like, I don't know, I kind of like the bluer shade maybe better. Stormy is great. Stormy's got like cerulean in it. But when you have, if you lay this on really thick and then you add a little bit of water, then that cerulean blue in the peacock will come forward. So it just depends on how I swatch it, you know, and you can kind of see in these swatches, like how different they are depending on how much water. And that's the beauty of that peacock. It's, it's really, really quite beautiful. So anyway, I'm working on these. I just flipped over the red. I will always, always do something like that. That's just crazy. <laughs> okay. It's, I always do that. Whenever I have wet paint, I always manage to get it on me. Okay. Uh, let's start with the one that is the easiest one for you. So this is the quill. And um, I have tons of water. It's very soppy. So I'm going to grab some paint and look at how beautiful this paint moves it's so great oh i love it so much um one of the easiest ways is just to do a little c curve so we're going to start in the center and we're just going to roll our brush like that now the brushes are going to roll differently right like this one it stopped midway but that's okay because we're going to keep rolling it around and in different ways 
because roses do not all look the same. So see what I'm doing? I added a little water. If I, if I'm, if this is too, too red and I want something a little more diluted, there we go. Now this is where the point comes in because I'm laying it down and then flicking it. I'm going to show you in just a second, take a little more paint and bam, look at that paint move. This is why I love making these colors. They're so pretty. Um, and then you can keep it loose, you know? So how are you guys doing? So this is my, by the way, you're going to ask me what paper I'm using and I'm still using the Fabriano that I bought for my birthday that I was like, so ticked off with and disappointed with. Well, we're developing a relationship which you will, you can pretty much make, I think in one way or another, you'll learn that you can make pretty much any paper work. And I hate to like have so much of this and not use it. So I figured, let me just keep working with it. I do love the texture. Like I love these little weird little texture marks that it has. So now I'm going back in and I'm just adding a little bit of color as a second little layer, leaving some of the light areas of the rows. And then I'm just kind of going in and making these little, these little marks because that's how roses are. They're like little petal layers. Now, one of the things that I noticed that I really like to do in these roses is I like to connect them. I don't like to have too many, um, too many parts that aren't connected. So one area will be touching another one in some way, right? So like this is going to touch that and let me get it a little darker so you can see. So this is going to touch the one before and then this one is going to touch the next one. It doesn't always have to, but I find that with watercolor, one of the best ways for it to look more professional is for your areas to touch when we do urban painting this winter, you're going to really depend on that to pull your watercolor together. So wait until you do some urban painting with me and you'll really be like, oh, wow. So now my center doesn't have to be in any order, right? Like this is a rose, right? So you're not always going to look at every rose the same. So I'm just kind of moving in this direction and I'm taking my brush and I'm just laying it and getting really nice and and loose with it. I like that. See that? Beautiful. So don't be afraid and I'm just going in and just kind of creating some lines. Look at that. That's gorgeous. You want a little more color, you can go back in and kind of add a little bit so that you have a little more a little more dimension you know you don't have to make things one-dimensional and one way to get things to not look one-dimensional is to do layers um, the other way is to you know mix it up with another color now we could we could add like a an orange to this we could add something we could add a little blue to it you know and see what it does but I think for right now let's just stick with one color so that you can get this this motion going really well. So let's do another one. So one more in this and then we'll um, switch brushes. So a little C curve, just like that. Get a little water on your brush. Maybe make it a little lighter and take another one like that. And take another one. And then I'm just connecting. So Right now I'm holding it all the way at the end because I just want to see if I get maybe a looser, even looser result. And if it's good to not have the same weight of um, paint throughout the whole flower. I find that if the flower has the same weight in color, it doesn't look right. It looks very flat. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch brushes now. Um, let's try this one. This is the striper. This one holds a lot of nice water. So for this one, um, you could do the C curve, but let's just kind of tap a center in like that. 
and then we're going to use the side of my brush to flick it because it's a very big loose brush and now I'm taking this and I'm just kind of just doing this got to make the sound <laughs> so the whoosh sound so I'm going to lay this down and flick out lay this down and flick out and see how it's getting this nice little this nice little loose effect I love that so depending on I don't really have a vision for them I just know that they're very very layered roses when you look at layers there's just petals and petals and petals so the looser the better so I'm leaving a lot of white space in there we'll do one more with this one so I'm just kind of doing like a little cross in there just try to like get something that looks a little bit like the center and then just laying this down laying some color down nice and loose the further you are away the more messy you'll be and how crazy that will look just doing some messiness that's nice yeah because then you're like looking at it in different ways and it's you're not going to be painting the same rose every single time right All right, let's get our brushes out of the water so we don't and lay them on their side or if you have a drying rack you lay them uh, brush side down so that they don't dry into the glue and loosen your brushes if you want them to last a lifetime listen I have brushes Literally, I know, I know you see a lot of brushes here, but I have brushes that are from my mom. So I have some that are 50 years old. And you know the interesting thing, I've got to show you this. I was looking at the brushes the other day. And here's something really interesting. So these are my most used ones in this pack. If you look at these Princeton brushes here, so these ones I ordered um, in the last few years the Princeton Neptune series because I, I just really like the series it's great and they have these like sea glass flats that are just beautiful and they're really wonderful to work with they do hold a lot of water so you can keep painting and painting it's nice um, but this brush here this is actually over 50 years old this was when it's a long liner brush by Princeton my mom got it when she was in art school how cool is that and so is the one next to it. And let's look at the wood. Like it's literally the same. Like now it's kind of like a, it's a very different finish on the wood. It almost, it almost feels like plastic or ceramic or something, right? It doesn't feel like real wood. These were solid wood and they were enameled. And look that it doesn't even chip. There's nothing wrong with these brushes. And she used all these brushes in art school before I was even born it's crazy right they're so it's so neat I love it so of course yeah I've, I use a lot of Princeton brushes because you know it's kind of like heritage this is a brush from um, her school too this was from France Grumbracher Grumbracher I think it's Grumbracher and of course that was a natural hairbrush because that's really all they used back then right this is an old Windsor & Newton red sable made in England when Windsor & Newton used to actually make things outside of China. Now, the reason why I don't use Windsor & Newton paints, except for like the indigo, and I don't even reorder it, I just have a bunch that I've had forever, um, is because they now make everything in China and it just, the quality isn't there in the paint, you know? Um, and everybody just really starts off with it. So this is the cat's tongue. The way I like to use it is see how it makes these little, it makes these little like triangles. So I just kind of start there and then take it on its side and do that little C curve. Gives a nice little point and it definitely does a lot different stroke, right? So you can see how you get just a much different look let's now um, just use our point to lay down some small C curves into the center and then I'm just gonna flick and roll oops got a lot of water on the brush the Neptune's crazy with water 
Now with some of these brushes, you'll see it's a lot different look. So you have to take that in consideration and try your brushes, really. Now, if you run into a pooling thing like this, you can wait till it dries and then take solid color and just add color to it like that. Uh, I added it on the wet because I'm just impatient like that, but you can do it either while it's wet or not, you know, you can wait till it dries or you can just take a towel and just dry it a little bit. But one thing I love about this mix is like in its full state, it's got this beautiful, just like such a rich, it's almost like we should either call this dark raspberry or cherry. I don't know. Or dark cherry. It's just got so many beautiful shades to it. So this one's drying. I'm going to go back in and just kind of add a little more um, depth and dimension using full strength paint and a different brush and very loosely kind of go in and and add some D you know just I want to say detail but it's not really detail so it's just a little bit of dimension also remember um, it's really easy to make things perfectly round but try not to do that. And if you find yourself doing that, either take a water bottle and literally, oops, literally spray it out so that you can loosen your shapes. It's a great way to just get things different and to create some really interesting backgrounds too, depending on your water bottle. Hopefully I won't ruin my paint swatches there. Look at that, that's cool. I like that. Okay, now I'm addicted. I just spray everything. <laughs> it's just, it's, this is relaxing. This is the moment. Let's get the samples out there so that I don't mess them all up and have to redo them again. Um, look at that. Easy. Easy. Just take a little cloth, dry some stuff out that you don't want. If you don't want to lose, you know, the edge, but you still want like this beautiful, powerful, you know, motion. Oh God, I love that. I actually love it. All right, let's do one with the dagger brush. So I'm dipping the end in the, in the paint and I'm just getting paint, loading the brush with paint. Now this is a Neptune dagger, so it holds a lot of paint. And if I go in the wet areas, um, of course it's not going to work. So we're just going to do, that's a little C curve right there in full paint. And then this is cool. See, look at that. That's beautiful. So what am I going to do? I'm going to lay the brush this way and we're going to lay the tip down and swirl it out like that. Do another one. Swirl it out. It's just such a cool, and this is a big brush for this paper. You know what I mean? But hey, we're daring like that, right? That's a pretty rose. Now I'm just kind of gonna follow these shapes and just give some little strikes. That's what I love about these brushes. They're neat. A brush, you know, it's great to collect brushes over time. You don't have to get them all at once, but you know, try getting sets because uh, sometimes the sets really save you um, money. I have sets coming in that I will review for you. I can actually do, well, this is kind of a Neptune review because I'm using a lot of Neptune brushes, but, um, acquaint yourself, like treat yourself every birthday or holiday to a, a brush set that you can afford in your affordable range. Neptune's a great one, depending on where you are, you know, different ones are going to, um, show up differently. Jackson's is a great place a source to get brushes I have um, a link for them in my uh, description box down below but price them out keep an eye on they go on sale constantly every day there's a new sale out there on paint and brushes um, and you just have to you know just take a look in the morning and see what's going on sale and sign up for coupons and stuff there's all kinds of coupons for these things online um i picked up some really amazing brushes today actually that i'm going to be doing giveaways with escoda brushes i mean it's it's just beautiful there's always something you know so look at how nice that 
see the striper is just fun. It's giving me this whole nother like look to this painting right now. I love it. Beautiful. Really, really pretty. Okay, so we've got some nice areas too that are bleeding and I kind of want to encourage them to go just a bit more. You know, that's really pretty. And we'll encourage that. Maybe we'll take our, well, you know, we can't, let me show you this. Okay, we'll get the striper out of there. Um, the side of a quill, you can just get it wet and roll these areas out and you have this instant background. It's really easy for beginners because you can just kind of loosen up the painting and just get this lots of white still is left on the paper but you now have you know gotten this loose background now in this area where I hit it a little too hard let's just get a rag or a paper towel you can either remove it with your brush um, if you have a brush that you know like that can pick up color like that so that you can do you know so that you don't lose the shape that you want so you just wet your brush you dry it and then you can go ahead and pick this up this is just a this is the Princeton Aqua Elite wash brush it's a great brush to lift color and just to kind of get in there and shape things out if I mess them up and don't worry because when it dries it's going to dry your paint is always going to dry a little bit lighter so you can then at that point decide if you want um I kind of like this look of removing some of the color you know so that I have this look yeah so as you can tell the Fabriano paper and I are getting along really well and learning to paint on it a little differently and I dare say it's now becoming my new favorite uh, tutorial paper because I, I just really like the texture and that's why I originally ordered it because it had a really cool texture and it was such a good price and um, they were having a sale and I was like oh my gosh this is perfect for all the tutorials I have to do this year and then I tried it and I was like this is a freaking nightmare paper but you know what now we're getting along just fine I have developed a relationship so getting back to the brushes you want to just kind of get a few brushes at first don't over go crazy because you'll end up with a ton you don't use and learn about those brushes and how you can use them in different ways and then you know when you're watching my videos I'll introduce you to a lot of different brushes here on this channel and as we go along you'll find things that maybe that I'm using they're like oh wow that's cool I didn't know that the that this dagger brush could do those kind of lines I like that for my style let me try it you know or you could make the striper brush do the same thing I mean it's got a nice point so it depends on what you want to do you know what I mean but I always encourage you to get looser brushes if you want to paint loosely painting um, loosely does require looser brushes otherwise it's just never going to work. You can't get a loose look that's like a professional look with a brush that's really stiff, you know? It just won't happen. Okay, so now that I have all these nice um, areas that were like messed up, I love it. It's cool. We're going to go ahead and put in some leaves. I love this like little area. Let's try not to mess it up. But I'm just kind of going back. I don't want any area any of my uh, this is just me personally from my work I just don't really want any of the um, the color to be so faded that I don't see some of the cherry in most of them and I want to kind of define some more of the rose petals so I'm using like I know you guys are going to make me make batches of this cherry. You're going to want to buy it because it's really nice. <laughs> Just go to my website and leave me a message on my on the contact page and I'll get back to you about it. If, if it's not for sale or if I sell out and I do put it on there, 
It is really pretty. I know. I don't want to like, if you, I know a lot of you are actually having trouble getting supplies and finding things. So this might work out actually, because I have access to tons of supplies and it doesn't really cost a ton for me to send it from here to, um, to the States. Uh, the only thing is I think UK has really, really bad shipping rates right now. So that might be a little bit more expensive, but I can definitely ship in Canada and I can definitely ship into the U S and we can always check rates, you know, on everything else and figure it out. Okay. God, this is so pretty. I almost don't want to add any leaves, but we got to do leaves because if we don't do leaves, what are you going to do? All right. So let's take the, um, peacock and let's try a leaf with the striper brush. So I'm just kind of dipping the striper brush in. Oh, this is so pretty. This is like my favorite color. Um, so let's lay the striper brush from the point out first. So we're just going to do a flick. It's, it's kind of like a looser C curve. And then I'm going to finish the other side just like that. So we're going to do it again. Ready? Point down. I don't want to cover it. Am I covering it? No, there we go. Point down and finish it. Look at that. So pretty. Mm -hmm. And don't worry if there's an area it's, I love leaving some white space, you know, I really do. I'm just adding some geometric stripes. So let's do another one. We're going to lay the point down and out it goes. And another. I like those unfinished edges too. So I'm adding a little bit of shaping. Let's add another one. There we go. Pretty. Let's bring one over here. Uh, this one, I'm going to go ahead and bring a little mark out. I'm just going to keep it really, really loose. I can add a little more color. Isn't this color great? Look how beautiful it is. This is the peacock. It's got cerulean in it. It's really pretty and it granulates too because it's got um, it's got French ultramarine so you can kind of see in some of this area you know like you can see some of the cerulean I love cerulean and I love French French ultramarine it's just great okay this is the last one with the striper brush because I get carried away it's so relaxing. It's a pretty leaf. Okay. Let's switch brushes. Ooh, I left brushes in the water. Why didn't you remind me? So here's the um, quill. It's just a, a nice loose quill, size four. Now, depending on the brush company, yes. Let me just tell you, they're not all fours. <laughs> no, fours are not the same. Not any brush company is equal to the other. So you do have to kind of look and, and measure and, you know, maybe get one and just decide if you want to go a little larger or smaller. Okay. So I'm going to lay this down again. We're laying the point down. Uh, probably just bring a little out and that's the shape. Nice. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of finish that off there. Let's add a little water and dilute it a little bit. So that is like full strength, but it is gorgeous. Look at that. Take your time because you'll get a really interesting shape 
if you take your time. Now it's going to start bleeding a little bit and that's okay because this is a very loose painting so I'm not worried. So I'm going to lay this entirely down and just let it pull back up. Oh that's kind of pretty but I'm going to control that just a bit. Oh I love that. That's nice. Happy accident. Um, come out and I'll just do a little bit, a little one there, like it's, like it's kind of going underneath something. And we'll lighten it up just to make it kind of fall into the background a little bit more. Um, and we'll do one more here. Can you see? Ooh, I painted below the line. Oof, I hate it when I do that. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. So very slowly and bring it out and finish it. That's pretty. Did you see that? So I'm just laying the full brush down and pulling it and bringing it out. Okay. Okay, that's that one. I need to get some more water. What's what do we have here? Okay, so now we're gonna try the cat's tongue. So this area where it's just bleeding a little too much, we're just going to lighten it up a little bit. So I can always go back in. I do like it though. It's really pretty. Okay, so I've got my cat's tongue loaded with some color. Let's just turn this a bit. Right in there. There we go. Sorry about that one area that you didn't get to see it, but I repeated it so many times, so I think we're okay. So the cat's tongue has a point at this end here, and then it goes thicker. So I'm gonna lay it on its side first. So starting with the point, I'm gonna lay it on its side, and then I'm gonna flip it out and bring it back out to the point. And that's the shape that it gets. And I'm just finding out right now what kind of shape I want. So like if that's the shape, we want the other side, right? So we're going to not do that unless we want a really thick leaf. We're just going to drag it to get that second shape. And then use the tip. There we go. So again, uh, now I'm going to use, now I'm going to set it down and we're going to see what it looks like. First, I want to kind of give it a little stem and then I'm just going to set it down. That's kind of pretty. Let's give it a little point. That's kind of pretty. We don't end up with our um, little white area in it, but it's kind of nice. And it's got some little like, uh, it does a little different shape. So we can do some little splotches and little accents that don't look like perfect little lines, right? That's my husky. She's sneezing. <laughs> Boy, they were nuts today. But then they ended up just being like little angels. Okay, I'm just playing a little bit, just giving myself some extra little shapes in here. Just using the brush. I actually use these brushes a lot to do um, background shapes just to fill in the spaces, just, I don't know. I, I, it's mostly just therapeutic and it's playtime, but then it ends up being something that somebody wants, so. Okay, uh, so I'll do another one right here. That's fully down, it's a nice shape. And then on its side, so on its side, so it's a decent shape. It's. Not as good, I think, as the other brushes, but we make it work. You can pretty much, you know, the, the point here is that you can make anything work. Did we do the dagger? We didn't do the dagger brush yet. This makes an interesting leaf. Let's see if we can do a rose petal leaf, though, with it. This makes really great, like, long, long leaves. I actually might try that. Hang on. But let's get, just stick with this first. And I need space because this is a long one. So I think 
Maybe we'll end up painting another rose here. I don't know. Let's see what this looks like. Cool. That's neat. So if I laid it that way, let's lay it that way. Oh, I like that. Mm hmm. So I, I laid it this way and then I flipped it over and laid it this way and I ended up with a pretty nice shape actually of a leaf. You know, I love the fact that it can do these beautiful, um, stems. I just get the, the prettiest stems, you know what I mean? From it. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. I love my loose dagger brushes. I can't even tell you how many times people are like, oh my God, I can't do loose brushes. But if you're taking a loose watercolor class, I just recommend that you get sloppy and try it because I think once you get the feel for it, you're going to love painting with these brushes. You're going to be like, oh my God, this is the funnest brush to do stuff with because it just, you know, like, have you ever been painting and you just feel like you can't get an organic shape to save your life. Like everything just looks so the same or monotonous and it just doesn't feel, it just doesn't feel unusual, right? It just feels kind of like it, you can't get it. You know what I mean, right? You just can't get it to look cool. <laughs> it just looks like it's a cartoon. Like it's too perfect. Well, the brush can save a lot of that, right? It can save a lot of that frustration, especially in the beginning, because if you're trying to paint loose shapes and your brush is too tight, you're not going to paint loose shapes with a brush that's really tight. You need something that, you know, don't hang on to old, old habits. I'm just in love with painting this dagger right now. It's just, it's amazing. Okay, I got like a little heart shape leaf. Look at how pretty this is, guys. We did it. We did a beautiful, a beautiful painting. I love it. So this area where it was kind of uh, messed up, let's just go back in. We can, we can just actually go back in with a dagger, some full strength rows, and I'm just gonna give this rose some real focus just giving it some strikes some some more C curves I actually think I'm gonna put a little bud there I'm trying to think which way it should go I guess I don't know. I'm trying to think of which way this painting should go let me this one Kind of looks good that way so we can just lay in a little color there we go this is pretty i'm really liking this right now i'm actually my tutorial deal here is turning into a painting that I'm actually going to frame. <laughs> I like it. I'm going to put this one. I don't know where I'm going to put this one. Luckily we have very high ceilings so I don't run out of wall space. Okay so I'm going back in and um, I'm just kind of taking my really nice loose striper brush and I'm just giving my my rose is just another dimension. Um, this is important to do if you look at your painting overall and you see that maybe the colors aren't, you know, there's not enough depth in the color or if it's just doesn't have enough detail in it and you feel like, you know, it's lacking something, maybe there's too much space, you know, depends on the, it depends on what you've just painted. But a lot of times with these kind of, uh, loose 
abstract florals, you do just want to kind of go in and just strike it up a little bit, you know, and enhance it just to make it just to make it have life, a lot of life, a lot of a lot of energy, a lot of interesting things for people to look at, you know, because yeah, you just, you just do, you just don't want it to be one, one thing. You just want it to like have a lot of brush strokes. And, you know, if you've ever looked at art that you love, there's a lot to look at. It's not that you're making it busy. And again, I don't, I don't really know if you're, if you're doing this exact same one, then I would definitely go in and put in different layers um, and different washes here, you know, just this is I call it glazing. Um, it's when the paint is dry or semi dry and you go back over it and that becomes uh, kind of a glaze. All right. I don't need to paint the other one. That is so cool. All right. Let me sign it and then we're done. We have painted roses with my new cherry color so pretty um let's make sure i got the right strength there you go okay we did it guys we got through another painting. This is pretty. And this is on that Fabriano notebook that, <laughs> that I was going to throw away. It's the, um, here, I will give you a link below for what paper I used. I wonder if this is going to bleed if I flip it up. I don't think so. I don't think it's wet. 1264 Fabriano made in Italy. It is cold press, 300 GSM, and it's 9 by 12. I just like the pad for the tutorials. I think it's, you know, I like the texture. Do you see the texture? Okay. So come join me on Facebook and share your version of this painting. And um, I think what we'll do is we will pick a winner for our giveaway very very soon you're definitely going to want to go and enter it go to the facebook page make sure that you look at the pinned post for the month and yeah you could win some paint some of these beautiful colors by the way um those of you who forgot the name of it already this is peacock i still i still think i'd like uh the name peacock for this one that was one of the group members actually named it uh stormy is the other one we didn't add any stormy. Should we add a little stormy? Let's add a little bit of stormy. And then cherry. I still think this is cherry. It looks good to me. Okay, so stormy. We're going to add a little stormy with um, the quill. Let's get stormy. Stormy's beautiful. Stormy's like, what are you getting me out for? What's going on? Let's. Stormy's going to bring like just another dimension to the to the leaves. I like Stormy because Stormy kind of um, I'm adding a little Stormy leaf every so often here, and what it's doing is it I don't know it's going to add like this beautiful little kind of added interest within the shapes, you know, to kind of carry you around the painting a little bit. Stormy's beautiful. So I'm just going through and just putting some loose kind of leaf shapes Letting Stormy dilute a little bit. So it almost looks like this is a relief 
a relief print, you know? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Oh, there's the light version of Stormy coming out. Yeah, you can see um, in Stormy, when it's diluted, there's a cerulean that comes out. And then when it's full, it's more Stormy, you know? And that's why I called it Stormy. It's really beautiful. You know, like you can see the cerulean is actually sinking into the textured paper. You know, so if you hit your brush just the right way, you're going to get more of the cerulean look than you get the gray. And this is just incredible. I'm so excited about this color. It, It's just a surprise. You know what I mean? Like, look at how blue that one is. It's very, very cerulean. Yeah, it's stormy. Ah, okay. All right, I'm done now officially. All right, guys, have a good night. Thanks for watching. Come back again soon. Don't forget to share it with a friend. See you later.